They told us September is going to be a bad month. They told us that by average, it's going to go down by 1.17%. Let's even it up to 1.2%. We didn't expect a drawdown bigger than 3%. We didn't expect the NASDAQ to be down more than 4%. We didn't expect that Monday we will be at greed, according to CNN, fear and greed, gauge, and end the week on Friday being in fear. We didn't expect all these things. What did we expect? A bit of drawdown, not a lot more, and people buying the dips. But guess what? We got a different kind of market, a market that says we are going to go down. Reasons for going down is not clear right now. Was it the yen trade? Was it traders trying to deleverage because of the employment report? Was it traders fearful of uh, rate reductions? We don't really know. What we do know is this week was the worst week in the stock market in 2024. And I can give you one good thing about it. You survived it. You survived the worst week of 2024. What we're going to do in the next few minutes, we're going to summarize Everything that happened in the stock market, or actually all the important things that happened in the stock market this week. We're going to talk about the major averages, the indices. We're going to talk about specific stocks. We're going to talk about the bad week Intel had, and of course, how it impacted other companies like Mobileye and even Broadcom that wanted Intel to produce something for it. We're going to talk about the employment report, and of course, we're going to look at next week. Next week is very, very important. Are we going to keep going down, bringing the drawdown a lot more than 3.5%, maybe even getting into the 5 7% from the last high? Or are we changing direction, moving up, and maybe, maybe even returning to greed status in CNN, fear and greed? Are you ready to start the weekly summary where we're going to summarize everything? Then let's go. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, hello, my name is Micah. And on this channel, we talk about uh, weekly... You know what? It's not weekly anymore. We talk about a lot of things that are related to the stock market. Uh, we I started uploading a lot of short videos. Some of them might be very relevant to the time. For example, new additions to the S&P 500, like Palantir, Dell, and Erie. Others are more related to general stuff like top three mistakes to avoid in the stock market, and some are related to specific stocks like SMCI, and I might do more. So if you're new, it would be amazing to subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you will be notified every time something is on. So this is what we expected. September drawdown 1.17%. This is according to Edgar Denny Research. Uh, it's their uh, chart. What we got... Is a lot more. S&P down 3.28%. NASDAQ down 4.68%. The Russell down almost 5%. Everything was down this week. And you, you want to know how your feelings were? This is a feelings gauge. It's called greed and, fear and greed gauge by CNN. When we're at extreme, extreme greed, everyone wants to buy stocks. It's like the stock market will never fall. We should buy all the stocks in the world. It's amazing. Usually, it's a time that we're at a, at a top, at a peak, and we're going to come down. When we're at fear, this is, by the way, Monday morning. Monday opening bell. This is closing bell on Friday. When it's fear... Everyone, every long-term investor is like, I want to sell all my portfolio. I don't want to hold any more stocks. This is the worst market to hold. I'll go to money market funds. This is fear. Why is this important? Because usually, and this is not financial advice. This is only for educational purposes only. Usually, buying when, it's, when everyone is fearful is a lot better than buying when everyone is greedy. The reason for that is because when everyone is fearful, usually it's, it's an, let's call it an early indicator that we are on the verge of changing direction to the upside versus greed or extreme greed, which usually is an indicator for a change of direction to the downside. But this represents in one picture feelings of viewers this week. Not all sectors were red for the week. Some were green, like utilities, uh, XLRE, and XLP. XLP is consumer durables. It's things that we can't go without. Cigarettes, toilet paper, and diapers. 
Adults and children. And babies. XLK, communi- XLK, which is technology, is down 6% for the week. Most of portfolios, for at least people that follow this channel, have a lot of technology exposure and a minus 6% is exactly what you feel right now. Energy down 5%, uh, communications down 34 uh, basically a red week for the market. Uh, we, I don't want to keep talking about that. Crypto market didn't provide any, any shelter. Bitcoin down 7%, Ethereum down almost 10%, and they're basically moving just like the market is moving. There isn't anything separate by saying, you know what, I'm going to hedge my portfolio exposure to the equity market by holding crypto. When market goes down, crypto goes down. When market goes up, crypto goes up. And maybe one day it will end that uh, correlation. But currently, we should not fight it. We should acknowledge it and know that this is reality. When we look at commodities, natural gas was the only one up for the week. Uh, silver and gold down between 0.7 and 4.4, and crude oil down 10% for the week. That, of course, made the XLE down 5%, which is the energy. And Magnificent 7, only Tesla on the green for the week. Amazon down, Microsoft down, Meta down, Apple down, Google down, and even NVIDIA down 12.5%. And being the second biggest company in the market, down 12.5%. Feels like a meme stock mania when it has more. Now I don't I think it's a bit down than $3 trillion. Uh, the movement in the market has become a lot more, um, call it erratic than in the past when rates, rate hikes or rate reduction odds are moving like meme stocks, when, uh, when uh, U.S. treasuries are moving like meme stocks, when companies with $3 trillion market cap are moving like meme stocks. This is not the market that most people, even professional ones, were trained on. This is a new kind of market, and that is why some of the people cannot really cope with it and are coming up with excuses. Everyone is manipulating. There are a lot of shorts and things like that. There might be manipulation. I'm not saying there isn't, but at the end of the day, this is a new kind of market where we need to adapt. Some people are adapting to it, like Aswad Damudaran, if you know the Dean of Valuations in NYU. Tom Lee and others, Jeremy Siegel from uh, Wharton School, but others are not, and they keep saying this is expensive, this is cheap, wrong kind of market. That's all I have to say, but how do they justify it? Here, you see, we said NVIDIA is expensive and it's down 12.5%. It's still expensive, even down 12.5%. Does that mean that it's going to crash 50% more? Probably not. And that brings us to the heat map. This is how it looks like. We talked about cigarettes and diapers. This is here. And some more, are uh, like utilities, are green. We talked about this. News for the week. You're probably saying, oh, probably a lot of things in the news. So let's look at all the things in the news. Friday, closing bell. S&P comes out with new additions and new deletions from S&P 500. Palantir, Dell, Aerie, going to be added September 23. American Airlines, Etsy, and Bio are going to be deleted from the S&P 500. If you will go to this short. Friday, Palantir, Dell, and Erie. You will get all the the explanation on what it means, how these things happen. And of course, you're more than welcome to comment on that short video. Friday, we also got the non-farm payrolls, which came lighter than the 200K, which shows a uh, calming down of the employment um, market, but unemployment coming down as well. So the Fed will reduce rates, but will they reduce 50 basis points or 25 basis points? It's not really clear right now. Um, And there are a lot of bets this way or the other. This is the chart of the unemployment. Sam rule is, of course, we talked about Sam rule in the past. Right now, we're a bit, as you can see, coming down. If this tips high, we will see higher, sorry. We will see very, very fast reduction of rates. Of course, it might crash the market, uh, increase the market. Everyone has their own um, definition of that. Of course, when it goes up a bit, everyone says recession. When it comes down, everyone says recession. Eventually, we will see a recession. Why? Because every few years we have a recession. I can tell you this. If every few months you will say recession, eventually you will be right. 
But most of the time you won't. So decide how you want to treat it. Robin Hood, Dicker Hood, is going to launch something new. 16th of October. We have no idea what it's going to be, but it's going to be very interesting. Uh, Paulson, a billionaire, says that he believes that rate cuts will get our Rates will come to as low as 2.5% by end of 2025. Yes, the business community is hurting from the higher rates. Intel is hurting from a lot of bad decisions in the past. And now Pat Gelsinger is trying to fix the company. Is it too late? And, and if you're new to the market and you don't know the history, there have been a lot of huge companies in the size Intel was that believe that they're so big that nothing can happen to them. They're gone from from what we know. Do you know Xerox? Do you know Kodak? Do you know a lot more companies like this that have, even GE, the big G have changed. And of course, all these things um, will impact, uh, and it might be Intel, by the way. So Intel, a lot of bad news. One of them is they need to raise cash. They might sell uh, their stake or some of their stake in Mobileye. Mobileye has about 88% or Intel owns 88% of Mobileye. That, of course, hurt Mobileye stock, which is down 44% uh, in, what, in last year. Uh, and it's lower than their IPO price. Tesla, very good week. You saw in the Magnificent 7 came up uh, strong and green. Uh, releases the roadmap. September, a lot of releases for the FSD, the Tesla AI. October, they're going to have their event uh, October 10th. And hopefully Q1 2025. Uh, pending approval, FSD in Europe and FSD in China. This is huge. This is really, really, really important if you're a Tesla shareholder. If you're not, then you don't care about it, and I've just spent your time. And also, if you're a Palantir shareholder and a Tesla shareholder, don't run and buy the Time magazine because 100 people that are impacting AI, Alex Karp from Palantir is not going to be there. Elon Musk with XAI and Tesla is not going to be there. But other people are going to be there like Scarlett Johansson that may or may not have been cloned. Her voice may or may not have been cloned for OpenAI. Marky Brownlee, amazing YouTuber and a person, but says, I'm not really using AI. They're the most influential AI by Time Magazine versus people that are really doing AI. Do you see Sam Altman here? Mm, not really. He is inside the Time Magazine, but of course not on the cover. So Time, very bad uh, choice of people, very bad choice of, um, of how to represent AI, but you know, it's their prerogative. Nippon Steel is trying to acquire US Steel. Um, and now the Biden administration has decided that this is their probably last war before election. They want to prevent that acquisition. There may be uh, reasons for that. Uh, U.S. still says that the reasons or if that acquisition is going to be blocked, they will need to close mills. And that is not good for unemployment. Biden administration says that it's not OK to give that, uh, that company to uh, Japanese hands. Who knows? NVIDIA on Tuesday. This comes out or Monday or Tuesday that NVIDIA receives a DOJ subpoena for an antitrust investigation. Of course, NVIDIA stock comes down, goes down. I think it was Monday. Goes down. Everyone is saying, oh, my God, our money is lost. A day later, Jim Cramer runs into the studio, 330, 3.40 p.m. or 3.45. I remember it because I was live streaming on the, on the Israeli channel, on the Hebrew channel. And says, guys, I've talked to very high people in NVIDIA, Jensen, and they didn't receive anything. No DOJ subpoena. That, of course, did not calm the market. As you've seen, NVIDIA ended the week on the red side. But it just shows how crazy things are, that every piece of information moves companies. And these are $3 trillion companies. These are not small companies like SMCI and others. Verizon is acquiring Frontier Communication. Um, Microsoft is launching uh, the next phase of Copilot September 16th, or at least having an event talking about it. Nordstrom Family wants to take it private and $23 a share. That's actually the, the, the price it's trading right now. Intel failed to produce the chip that Broadcom asked them. And if Intel wants to be a foundry, <laughs> another setback in, on Intel's plans. And last but not least, we don't know, but there is humming in the background 
that the yen trade, the, un the unwinding that we saw uh, August 5th, might still be in play, and that might be some of the reasons why there is pressure on the market. Like I said, we don't really know why the markets fell. Uh, this week it was too much, a lot more than average, too exaggerated. We probably will see next week if it will continue or not. And next week is going to start... Um, usually 9.30 a.m., of course, uh, opening bell, but 1 p.m. Eastern, we are going to get Apple event where they're going to show their new iPhones, iPhone 16. Will they be able to create a new upgrade cycle? And an upgrade cycle for Apple happens every four years. That usually bumps up the revenue and, of course, their earnings. Will iPhone 16, with AI capabilities, with maybe new features that we are not aware of, Will it push or will it create that upgrade cycle? People are still walking around with iPhone 12 and saying that's good enough for me. Some are 13. I change mine every year from iPhone 1. Why? I don't know. I don't really see the difference, but I do it. Uh, others are not that savvy about it, and I understand them as well. But that's going to be very interesting. That's Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Wednesday. Before market opens, 8.30 a.m., CPI is going to be released, and we will want to see inflation falling like a rock, hopefully, which, of course, will increase the odds of what kind of reduction we might see from the Fed. Thursday, we will see the PPI, less important, but still important. And from the earnings perspective, we are almost done. We're, get, we're getting Oracle on Monday, Adobe on Thursday, and in the middle, we'll, we might hear from GameStop Maybe, eventually, we will hear something interesting from GameStop. Otherwise, that chain, game chain, is pretty much dying. And that's, that brings us to the S&P 500. This is the SPX, the index. You can buy the, the ETF, and again, not financial advice, the SPY or VU. But what you see right now is a parallel channel on a logarithmic scale of the S&P starting from October. You can see that around Jul July this year, we broke down from that parallel. This is a perfect parallel channel that we went through, that we uh, gone up through. We punctured it and basically uh, broke through our support. And now that support has become resistance and we went down during the week. You can see that our drawdown has been about from this high to where we ended Friday, 4.3%. Uh, we might see about 7% reduction. That might happen, not more, but 7% altogether, all the way down to around 5,200, maybe even 5,119. I don't know when it's going to happen and if it's going to happen. What I do know is we have a strong, resistance, a strong support around 5,390 that we might turn from and go up, hopefully. And if not, we will break down and then Next, uh, next stop, we have a small gap here around 53.70, but after that, 51.19. This is what I had for you for this week. I'll see you next week, but follow because shorts will be uploaded almost every day. If you want to stay updated, stay on the shorts. Comments below. Till next time. Bye-bye.